We can go ahead and get started then, I think, uh, with this Wednesday evening, afternoon, evening ritual that we've all grown so accustomed to. Um, this week, we've got Maria, right? Maria is going to cover dates and times for us. So um, without, I don't have anything else to, to do to introduce, introduce <laughs> Maria or the topic. So I'll just turn it over to you. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to share my screen. Are you able to see it? And if I pass, are you able to see me passing, flipping through? Okay. Good. Okay, so I'm super excited to be here today. Um, I don't know, you always do the icebreaker. So I thought, okay, I'm going to continue with the tradition. Perfect. Um, so I, I thought about the icebreaker. So it's about telling two statements that are true about yourself and one lie. And, and then people have to figure out what, which one is the lie. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start and then you can, we, each of us can continue. So, uh, so my truths are, so my statements are, um, I'm a belly dancer, I love um, bunnies, and I have been to Scotland. Okay, so, uh, so we have to guess which one was the lie? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, go, I'll make a guess. I guess. I'm going to guess that you actually really hate bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. No, not that one. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. <laughs> Never been to Scotland. Yeah, I have never been to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, so who would like to continue? You pick somebody. Okay, so I'm going to go in the order that you appear on my screen. So Colin goes next. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. Um, I was just thinking about it. Uh, let's see. What am I going to say? Uh, I have a PhD. Um, I have been to, I have been to Europe and I have three cats. I think I've heard about your cats before, so I'm going to go with that as a truth. As a cat is true. That is true. I do have three cats, yes. <laughs> and you have PhD, so I guess you haven't been to Europe. <laughs> I have not been to Europe. That is correct. <laughs> I don't think I've ever mentioned that I, I have my doctorate, but uh, yeah, I've never been to Europe. So it's something I've always wanted to do, and I've just haven't had the opportunity to do yet. Okay, so the next person is Brian. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's say I, um, I, have, I have lived in Texas uh, three different times, moved away and moved back. <clears throat> um, I like baseball. And, uh, and my oldest child is a son. Uh, I think you, are, you, you don't you have just daughter? Yes, I only have daughters. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that too. I was going to say that you, you only had daughters, so. I only have daughters. <laughs> oh. Okay, so then Sandra. Okay, so um, I am... Um, I don't have um, a barbecue. Uh, I don't have a barbecue. I uh, I like beer, and I um, I'm not in social media at all. That's those are good ones. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I think we talked about social media. 
and you have like a very slight social media presence. So I'm going to say that is the lie. Uh, no, it's this one is true because I'm not. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So generally, you generally you have no social media. Okay. Hmm. So the other one's beer and barbecue. Yeah. You don't have barbecue at your place. Yeah, so it's a true. I don't have a barbecue, and uh, so it's just that I don't like beer. So, and at least now I have a TV, but I use not to have a TV, not a barbecue, and never drink beer. So I was kind of strange in Canada country. <laughs> All right, so Manza. Um, I like vodka. Um, I have. This is my first time outside India. Um, like come coming here to US, and uh, I like eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a wild guess yeah. that you don't like vodka. <laughs> that, that's correct. <laughs> what, which one was it? That I don't like vodka. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for going along. <laughs> Um, it's nice to know a little bit more about you. This was fun. So um, for today, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go over dates and times. Um, so I'm gonna go over some generalities, then talk about dates and times and, and the data types, and then go over some common tasks. So create, creating data types, pulling out individual date components, rounding dates, and setting date components. What I don't think I'm gonna have time to go over today um, is the, the arithmetic operations and working with time zones. But I also don't think that that is going to cover the whole next session. So I don't know what the next session is, um, but whoever is, is, is doing the next session, maybe plan for between 20 and 30 minutes of the session being covered um, being, being about dates and times and performing arithmetic operations. Is that okay? That, does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So feel free to take as much time as you, as you need or don't need on this one. Um, the, the next chapter is, if there's just an introductory chapter um, to talk about programming. Um, and then there, it talks about pipes which is, I think, pretty short as well. Um, and then chapter 19 is after that, which is functions. And I believe Colin was going to cover functions. Am I, I, do I keep assigning you things, Colin, that you have not volunteered for? No, I took functions. Um, I think, so, I, did, did, did Sandra, did you um, volunteer for pipes? Or no. am I just thinking that? Oh yeah, I can. Okay, so I'll volunteer for pipe. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to volunteer you if you did. I just I thought I thought you said something about it. So oh, yes, I said that I will take one and I didn't know which one to take, right. but I can take pipe. Okay, good. Okay. So I, I think uh, I mean Sandra, obviously you take as much time as you need as well, but I my sense is that um, pipes is maybe like half a session, like half an hour uh, worth of material. And so Maria, yeah. feel free to take as much time as you need. And if we roll over into next week, then you can finish it up and then we'll let Sandra do, do pipes. So Sandra, you're okay to do pipes next week then? Yes, I'm okay to do pipe next week. And you are right, it will be a short one. So yeah. Cool, excellent. All right, so that was a, <clears throat> the long answer to an easy question, but now we've got the next couple of weeks planned. So good, thank you. Yay, okay. Uh, so let's start with some general general stuff. Um, one thing to note is that working for working with dates and times, we need to actually load um, the package Lubridate and that package is not part of the tidyverse. So that's something to take into account because I usually have the tendency of just loading the tidyverse when I start working with R and, and might forget that actually is a separate package, you know? So, 
Uh, then uh, the book basically cover these two types of data, dates and dates time, date times. Um, they also mention times, but but they also they mention that times is not is not something that the package library date focuses on. So I'm gonna mostly focus on dates and dates and times. So you can tell that something is a date because in a table is going to be labeled as a date and is only going to contain information about the year, month, and day of, of a date. So not information about the time, the, the hour, minutes, and seconds. And you can tell that something is a date time because in a table, this is going to be, the data type is going to be labeled as DTTM. So that's the indication that this is a date time. And here you are going to see that you have a data object that is composed by the year, month, day, but also information about the specific time. Now, the recommendation of the book and in general is to try to work with the simplest data type that you can. So if you're really interested in dates um, and not really dates and times, and if you have data in dates and times, it's, it's probably better to convert them to simplify them to dates so that it's easier to work with them. So simplest data type that you can. Now going over the, the tasks that we can do with dates and times, the first, the most essential task is to create date and date time. So there are several ways in which we can do this. We can do this from current uh, date or date times uh, objects. We can do this from a string. We can do this from unquoted numbers. We can do this from individual uh, daytime components. And we can do this from ex an existing date or daytime object. So I'm going to go over each of these so that you can you know, solidify and, and have it, um, a clear understanding of what each of these mean. So, um, uh, the first type is from a current date or date time. So to obtain the current date, we can just say use the function today. Uh, you don't have to put anything inside the, the, in the parenthesis. And here you see that it's giving us today's date. So April 7, 2021. If you want to get the time also, not just the date, then you use the function now. Again, nothing inside the parenthesis, and that's going to give you the date and the time. So, and you, and this I think is because of the time zone, because GMT minus zero five. So I'm, I'm in the same time zone of Texas. So this will be central time for you in daily daylight saving time. So that's a quick way to create dates and times from current dates and date times. The next option that you have is to create these from strings. The first approach that you can take to do that is through parsing, but that's not covered in this chapter. That's covered in the data import chapter. And I think you have already gone through this, right? This is a chapter that was uh, already covered. But this was a little bit confusing to me because when you have several ways of doing the same thing, at a certain point is helpful, but it's also a little bit confusing because in my brain, sometimes I merge both. So, so I think for me, after reading this chapter, uh, it's going to be good to go back to data import and notice the difference and have like differentiate those two approaches in my mind. So the first approach was already covered in data import, in the data import um, chapter, but we can take a second approach that is using the Lubridate package helpers. And so the helpers here are going to be the letter, so Y uh, to represent year, M to represent month, D to represent day, and so on and so forth. So you can, you also have hour, you also have second, um, S for second and, and H for hour and M to, for minute. So here, to parse, for example, here we have a date that is uh, January 31st of 2017. 
So the strategy here is that whenever you, you have a date, you are going to identify the order in which the components appear in your data. So here, what I'm seeing is first I have the year, then I have the month, then I have the date. So what I have to do is, is abstract that and specify the order of the components in your data so that R is able to parse them. So I have to essentially replicate what is in here, but using the helpers. So the year comes first, then the month, then the day. And that's how I can parse the data. Um, so here we have a different example. If I were to have the month first, then the year, then the day, then I use the, the I, I change the order of the helpers in order to match the order that is in my data. Now, this is very restrictive because as you can see, not always in our data, we are going to have this specific format with the, with the hyphens. We might have other data formats with words. Maybe we have, instead of the hyphens, we have slashes. So um, Lubredate is going to be able to, to detect those. So we can see here some examples. No matter how you have it, if you have it, in written form with letters, or if you have it with the slashes, or if you have it with hyphens, as long as the order and the pattern you specify it well using the, the, the helpers, you are going to be able to, to parse the data correctly. So here we have different ways of specifying the same date. This is January 31st, 2017, in different ways. Um, and in all of them, we get, we get the same answer, um, regardless of the format in which we have it, as long as we place the helpers in the correct order. So as I was saying, uh, here we are constructing a date time object. So here we need to specify the hour, the minutes, and the seconds. Okay. I've always thought, <clears throat> I was just going to say, I've always thought this was interesting and I have to think, I have to always remind myself because I think that whenever, whenever you do a function, it seems like you're taking an input and then that function is changing the input into your desired output. And I guess it's sort of doing that, but, but really the format of these functions are just saying, um, like I, that you have, you have a, a, an input and it's telling the system to interpret that input because it's laid out in a certain way. So it's, so it's not so much taking something and then turning it into a different view. Maybe it is, but it's more of like just specifying how the date is laid out because you want to do something bigger to it later. I don't know. I don't know if I'm really making sense on that because I get that you're taking January 31st, 2017 and changing it to 2017-01-31, but, but I always have to remind myself on these that the, the function names have to do with the way that the data is originally presented, not the way that you want it to look afterwards. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's it has Oh, sorry, Maria, I didn't mean to cut you no. off. I, I thought that was kind of interesting when you were saying that, Ryan, because I was thinking about, you know, going back to what the chapter said, and Maria mentioned at the start of why Lubridate isn't part of the core tidyverse. And I was thinking, well, part of the core tidyverse is to work with data and not necessarily maybe change it. And so maybe that's one of the reasons why, you know, Lubridate is not part of the core tidyverse yeah. is because it, it changes, I think, well, it, it, like these change the representation of the data themselves in a way, I guess, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little off, but when you were mentioning that, I just thought came, that came to my mind. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have a little exercise for us. So we can do first this one and then the one in the right. So the idea here is, we, is to identify which of the helpers will correctly parse each of the date time objects. So if we have uh, this, 
this daytime object, which of these is going to correctly parse it? I'm going with C. Yeah, Colin says the same. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you all agree? Yeah. Yeah, because it's the is the day. Um, I figure it out because I start with the day. So the next one is not a date time, but it's only a date object. So which of these uh will correctly parse that one. I think that one's none of the above. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm voting for none of the above. Yeah. Sandra, what do you say? What do you say? Uh, honestly, it's already difficult for me because I put day before months. Mm -hmm. I have a, it's, a, it's something I didn't want to touch the date because the North American date are confusing for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. It's, uh, yeah. So, so my, my shortcut to decide on this one is that whenever you see the, the, how do you call this? The, um, the underscore? Underscore. Uh, the underscore followed by HMS, you know that they are talking about that time. So they, you know that they are talking about an hour, minutes, and seconds. So because this one doesn't have those, those parts, um, you know that this is not going to work. And so, and so for that reason, and because we start with the month, um, it would be none of, of the above. Because this this could work as long as you would as you have the month first, and then the day, and then the year. Yeah. Um, so another way to create date and date times is from unquoted numbers. So in the examples. Um, before we already we had a string so you can tell that it's a string because we have the the quotation marks but in here we can also provide just a number and so here i like <laughs> squeeze it's squished you know uh, so without hyphens or or slashes or anything but you can tell here that is the year uh, here we have the month and here we have the date at the very end so that's another way in which you can you can create dates and date times. And so if you use, again, you have to um, retain the order, the specific order in which you, you have your data, is going to parse it correctly and create the object correctly. And you can also add a time zone. That's only to tell you that that's possible, but time zones is, is a tricky thing. And, and I'll go briefly over that in the next, during the next uh, session. So another way to create dates and date times is from individual components. And so for this, we use the functions make date and make date time, depending on what you want to create. If you want to create a date, we use make date. And if you want to create a date time object, then uh, we use make data. So this is um this is um, uh, um a selection of some variables of the NYC flights data set. That is the data set that uh, the chapter uses. So essentially, we have information on flight uh, flights departures and and arrivals. So here I only selected the flight so that you can get an idea of this is the flight number. And then we have the date of departure. So we have it in, in year as a column, the month as another column, day, hour, and minute. 
And so with these functions, make date and make date time, what you can do is merge the information or combine the information that you have in these multiple columns. So right now you have your information about the, the date and time spread across columns. So you can combine that so that you can have an object that is a date object and a daytime or a daytime object. And that's gonna make your life easier if what you are interested in is in manipulating the, the daytime objects. So if you are interested in studying in studying those um, the properties of the dates or something that has to do with the dates, uh, it's easier to manipulate if you have the if you have it in the right format that it will be dates or date times. And so here's an example of how you can do that. So here uh, we want to create a variable that is called departure. And so what we do is we use the make date function if we're only interested in the date. And we have to provide the input for how we are going to create that. So here we say, okay, let's combine the year, the month and the day. Yeah. And as you can see here in the example, I only printed the, the first five rows. So as you can see, so here I combine the year, the month, the day. I didn't combine the hour because I just wanted to create a date. And so what I end up with is the year, the month and the date already parsed and created as a date object. And I know that is a date object and that I did my job correctly because I get the label. Yeah. And do, do you know if it will work if we want to set up um, a date that it doesn't exist? Mm -hmm. uh, it, was just, it was just a question just to know that if it, if it check if the date could be really a date. Like, for example, February 30th, something yes. like that. Uh, that's a good question. Let's see. Mm. I, I'm not sure. I think you cannot see my screen, right? Let's see. Mm. Let's try. Mm. Okay, so. I don't know if this will work. As if you, if I had, um, do you know what I mean? like if, if I had not, not, a, I don't know if the input has to be, a, has to be columns, you know what I mean? So if you did like, um, 2017 comma zero two for February and then 30. Mm -mm. NA. But if you change the 30 to like 3 or 12, yeah. That would yeah. Work. That would work. Yeah. <clears throat> so you will get an NA. That's a good question. Yeah. Can you can you change it now and make it, yeah, put it in a different order? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It has to maybe no. Not today. No. <laughs> what, if, what if you remove the zero from zero to? I think it has to follow the year. the format. Yeah, the eight six zero one. You know, the year, month, day. I think it has to follow that. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the arguments too, like if you do the question mark make date, it makes it clear that it's in that kind of order: year, month, day, hour, minute, second, time. Well, that's date time, but yeah, follows that kind of largest to smallest unit yeah 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 this is what it expects yeah because mm -hmm. i think what happens is if you provide uh this in this order uh it just thinks oh the year cannot be 28 so yeah but you could probably specify like day equals 28 because then you're explicitly stating the arguments and then that should work for you. So like day, I'm guessing it would work day, month, because then you're explicitly saying the arguments out or spelling yeah. them out. 
Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Sorry for it. keep switching. Um, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Um, okay. So another way to create the dates and date times is from an existing date or date time object. So this, this, you will use this or you would use this if you want to switch between date and date time objects. So this is, it, is the example that I was referring to when you want to simplify for some reason or complicate your life for some reason, <laughs> you can, you can, um, you can switch between the two. So as we saw at the beginning, if you use the function today, you're only going to get a date object because it is only the day. So you can transform that to as day time, and then it's going to transform it into a day time object. And um, inversely or conversely, you can do that with now. So if you use the function now, uh, you are going to get a date time object because now is with times. Um, and you can transform it, simplify it to a date using the as date function. And that's gonna give you, uh, the result is going to be the simplification and just the date object. So here we are not getting the times. Yeah, but it, it doesn't add a time on the, on the first one though, huh? as date time. It won't yeah. add a time on. That's what I was wondering too. I think that because it's, it's, it has the use TC, I think it's just thinking zero, 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 zero. Yeah. Yeah, it would interpret it. Um, it would interpret it that way, I think. Like if you did more manipulations with it, you know. Yeah. Um, the next type of tasks that we can do. So that's all about creating um, dates and date times. Those are all the, the options. But now we can also pull out components of a date or the daytime object. And how we do this is with the help of what the book calls accessor functions. So this is the list of accessor functions that we have. We can pull out the year of an object, the month, the the day of the month, so M day stands for day of the month, the day of the year. So day of the month is gonna tell you, so for example, today is the seventh. So it would tell you is the seventh day of the month and day of the year. So if I count the days from January 1st until today, how many are those? So this is going to give you the day of the year, the day of the week, uh, so which day, from Sunday, the default is Sunday, the, the weeks start on Sunday, so that's something to note. Um, the hour, the minute, and the second. So you can extract these components from an, a date or daytime object. So let's see how that works. So, uh, oops. Yeah. So here, for example, I create uh, an object that is called daytime. And essentially I created an object that was today's date, um, but the time was noon, noon 34, 56 seconds. And so if I want to extract the year, it's going to give me, okay, 2021. The month, April, so this is numeric, so this is going to give me four the day of the month, the 7th of April, the day of the year, and today is gonna be the 97th day, and the day of the week, Jesus. And this is interesting because here, my expectation is was that because it's Wednesday, uh, the, the day of the week was going to be three, but again, the default is Sunday. So then if, you, if Sunday is one, then Wednesday will be the fourth day, yeah? But we, we can change that. So now if we want to, instead of obtaining the number for some things that have a label like the month and the day, 
we can obtain the label instead of the number that represents the position of the month or the day. So here, if for month of the, of today, I, I, I specify that I want the label, I get April. And this is, gets interpreted as a factor. So I also get the, the specification of the levels below. And for the day of the week, if I use label, I'm gonna get Wednesday. And I can specify when I want to start my week. So, so if I say one, um, is going to interpret this as Monday, Monday being the start of the week. And if I put seven here, that is the default, Sunday gets interpreted as the first day of the week for counting the number of days that have passed since the start of the week. Does that make sense? Yeah. You said week start zero for Sunday? Uh, seven. Oh, seven, okay. Yeah, which is kind of weird, <laughs> but yeah. Mansa, you were going to ask something. I was just I was just counting the days on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so that's how you can pull out components of of these types of objects. Now rounding. Ah, this is an interesting topic. I felt like this was a little bit confusing at the beginning, but I found a way to help me out if I when if when I get confused so the first thing is I extracted this is a portion of the cheat sheet on dates and times and so I found this portion about rounding dates and times very useful because it, it specifies how you should do it and essentially what you want to do with this is is round the date that you have date or date the date time and so you have several ways to do it. You can uh, round down to the nearest unit, so the nearest, earliest, earlier unit. So that's, that you can do with the floor date function. So for example, if I'm in the middle of February and I want to round it, but to the, to the, down to the nearest unit that was earlier, is going to go to the start of February. Um, I can also use round date and that's gonna <clears throat> round the date time to the nearest unit, no matter in which direction it goes. Whichever is nearer, if, if it's earlier or after, is going to round to whichever is closer to your date. And then you can also use ceiling date and that's gonna give you um, the rounding, but not to, the, to a date that was earlier but to a day that is, that is going to come after. And so I felt like this graph was useful to understand how these different functions work. And I remember that the first time that I read the chapter, I was thoroughly confused, but I feel like this, this can help you. And another function that was not covered in the book, but that is covered in the sheet, sheet, sheet and I feel like it's um, useful, it could be useful, is the rollback. So the rollback, what is going to happen is it's going to transform your, your date or date time object into the last date of the previous month. So I know all of this can be a little bit confusing because we have several, we have some concepts here. So what I did was um, use this graph because I felt it was very intuitive and complement it with extracting, with using these, these functions with today. Because I feel in the book, they use an example that was 2016. And, and, and I felt like for me, it was good to use today so that I could understand like, what is, what is going on? You know, so here I have an image of the of the cheat sheet so that we can get, you know, you can get the graphical display of how the relationships work, how the functions work, and the example. So um, if I have today as an example, so today is the 7th of April, 2001, and you use floor date, 
and you have to specify what is the, the unit of time to which you want to round. So this could be year, month, um, day, it could be hour, it could be minute or second. So you can use all of those options. But to understand, I felt like it was more, it was clear for me to use month because it's intuitive what comes before, what comes after, very intuitive, very easy for me. So if I use floor date, because I want to go to the earliest, to the earliest possible month, I'm on the 7th of April, the earliest possible start is April 1st. So you see, so it goes back, goes back to the, to the um, closest month. Now, I can also round date and that's gonna pick whichever is closest. So after it will be May, before it will be April. And because I'm on the seventh, it's going to go to the beginning of April. But let's say that I was on the 17th, on the 20th, you know, after the 15th, then it will go to May, you know, it will go to the next one. But because I'm on the seventh, the closest is the start. So it's, it's gonna go to the, to the beginning of April. Now, if I use ceiling, if I use ceiling, then it's gonna go to the closest, but after like up. So now if I'm on the 7th of April, the closest month is going to be May. And so that's what the, the function is, is, the output is telling me. So the closest one is, is May, yeah? And then with rollback, what is happening is, okay, I'm on April 7th. What is the last day of the previous month? March 31st. So these are useful functions and this is what I use to, to get deconfused until I get confused again. <laughs> but for now it was super helpful. I, I finally got the, the rounding functions. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's not the same as the rounding function just for number, not for date. The distinction between floor, round and ceiling. Mm, say that again. When we just uh, use number, not date. I believe that is the same distinction between floor, round, and ceiling on just number. Uh, I have never used, like you, you say that there are other functions that are not specific for dates, are just for general numbers. No, but uh, you, we have the floor function, the round function, and the ceiling function as well in base air. Uh, I, I, so I didn't think know that, about that. that when we just want to round number, you know, sometimes you want to have the uh, the floors, yeah, yeah, yes, I think that there is, yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's the same one just for number. I've, I've seen, I've seen them in Excel that they uses the same, the same terms, floor, round, and ceiling. Um, I don't know in R, if other, I haven't seen it anywhere besides this right now, but, uh, but those concepts of like floor, round, and ceiling, I think are, are fairly common. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I hadn't seen it before other than right now, though. So that's cool. Just to add a little bit to this, um, it took me a while. I've, I've used these functions quite a bit. And I think the one thing that always tripped me up was understanding that you have to give it a unit. So the unit was the one thing that always tripped me up. I always thought that it would just round up or down just for the month but you can set this for the day. I think you could even go down to the hour or the minute if you wanted to, yeah. but that was always something that tripped me up when I was first trying to figure out how do I get these to work was this. And then I didn't know about rollback um, because I used to do like floor date. And then I used to do like minus one to get the previous day instead of just using rollback. And so now I'm going to go back into my code that I've been working on that does the minus one and I'm going to fix it. Minus one second is that what you would do? So it's so it's just barely on the other side of, of this one. So you, you what you do is like you would have like your date, you'd pass your date into it, do floor date, unit month. It would take you to the first of that month, but then you would do minus one, which would be minus a day, 
And so you get the, you get the last day of the month. I mean, it works, but it's not as yeah. simple as like rollback would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I have a little exercise uh, for you. So it's really a round of exercises. So I have created here a daytime object. Um, so this is Feb uh, January 26, 2001, with an hour. So 4.35 PM, essentially. Yeah. And so the, the idea here is to go through each of these and figure out what would be the output of each of these functions. So if I use floor date here and I ask to round for the hour, what, what I should get? What should I get? Sixteen? Yeah. Yeah, January 26, 2021, 1600. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if I do this one. 17. 17. And then this one. What? 16. Oh, no, 17 again. 17 no. again. And roll back. Thirty first March, twenty twenty one. The same day. It's the same time. So this is January. December thirty first. Because doesn't roll back always go? Oh yeah, yeah. This is this month. This is January. Yeah, I thought it's April. I thought it's today's day. Yeah. yeah. So we can look at the solutions. So yeah, so for floor date, it goes it goes back to, to 16. Uh, for round date, because I'm on the 35 and past the half, um, it goes to the to the up, to, it goes up. And for ceiling, it automatically goes up. And for rollback. It retains the time and goes back to December. Yeah? That's great. Okay, great. So I hope that was helpful to kind of solidify, have it, um, have it ha know how this, this works. So the last topic that I'm going to cover today is the setting of components. So we saw that you can create a date and daytime objects. You can pull out the components and you can round the objects. And now we are setting components. Um, for, for doing this, we are going to be using the same accessor functions that we saw when we were talking about pulling out components. And so now the, the goal here is not only to extract these parts, but to modify them. So here, if I go back to now at that time, right before, right when I, I loaded the presentation, it was today at um, almost six my time, which depending on where you are, might be different. So now I not just want to extract the year, but I want to change it. So instead of being it, 2021, I want to set it to 2020. And so what I can do is um, pull out the element and then assign 2020 to that component of the, of the object. And so if I ask R to print X for me again, I'm gonna say, see that the month, day are the same, the time is the same, but what has changed is only that component, 2020. And I can do the same with other pieces, with other components using the, the accessor functions. So, so if I want to set the month, I can pull out the element and then assign it to something else. Now here, the trick is that you can, you can use 
you know, specify the what you want the, the day, the year to be or the month, but you can also use arithmetic here. So this is an example of what Colin was saying about like uh, taking, out, taking off a day, you can add a month. And so this could be useful if you want this to vary according to what month it is in, in, that you have in your object. Uh, and so you can add just one month. And so I print X again. And what I have here is that I just added a month. So now it's not April, it's May, but everything else retained the same, is, is kept the same as my original object. Um, you can also set components using the update function. So here, what you're going to do is say update and you are going to obtain, you are going to start by um, defining your object, the object that you want to update. In this case is X, my date. And then you have to specify what element you want to update and the update that you want to make. So here you update, I printed X so that we know it was now 2020, um, the 7th of May, 2020. If I update the year to 2019, I get this 7th of May of 2019. So is update pretty much the same as the ones you were just showing a second ago? Update yeah. X year equals 2019 is the same as year, year X assign 2019. Mm -hmm. um, but what I think is happening here though is that because is is one of these things that we were um, discussing the other day about reassigning. Mm -hmm. If I just do this, it's going to ephemerally change it. But because I'm not reassigning x to x equals update Ba, ba, ba. If I call X again, it's going to go back to the original setting. Yeah. And uh, you can also, uh, you, you also have the, um, it, this is, a, this is a, um, a behavior that R has. And the behavior is that if you have an impossible date, like you were mentioning Sandra a while ago. So for example, here, I know that I have my date, today's date, right? April 7th, 2001, 2021. But I know that April only has 30 days. Uh, but if I want to update to the day of the month equals 31, what is going to happen is it's going to add any additional numbers, any additional days that go beyond what is possible. So if I have 30 days in April and I ask it to update it to 31, it's going to add one and that makes it so that now it is the 1st of May. Oh yeah, the 1st of May. Yeah. So is that almost like adding, uh, I'm gonna have to play around with this one to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So what? So is it, if it's an impossible day and you, and you surpassed okay. what you should have put, the rollover is that it's gonna keep adding to the next unit. Yeah. Does it give any warnings? No, it didn't give me any warnings. <laughs> Just did it. <laughs> yeah. Which is not very helpful. <laughs> not, not ideal, maybe. Yeah. So you want you want to be careful with that. But yeah, and that's what I what I have for today. Uh, for next week, we will be covering time spans and very briefly time zones. And and that's it. Um, thank you. I don't know if you would like to discuss something else in the three minutes that we have or, or go over some part or something. I, I don't, I think this is amazing. And uh, whoever it was that invented Lubridate, I wanna buy him a drink because it's pretty, it covers like everything that you could ever think that you might need to do. 
Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, but um, I mean, just what you've shown here today, Maria, about the different things that I would have never thought to do, especially like just call out, just just call out the the portion that you want to change and add add one to it, or you know, if you want to add a month, just identify the month and then add one to it. It's all it all looks very simple. So, um, no, I think it's I think it's really good. And if, and too, I, I just, uh, same thing. I think Luber Day is just awesome. Like you said, Ryan, and I was looking at it and it reminded me of something. When you look at like round date, floor date and ceiling date, the units, you can specify like specific units outside of just doing month. You could do like by month, quarter, season, mm -hmm. one second, five minutes. It's like, you can pretty much throw any unit at like the floor date and ceiling date and it will, it will parse the date that you need, or it will make the, make the conversion. And yeah, if you get a chance do question mark ceiling date and just read these functions and it's just amazing what you can throw at it and it will make the calculation. That's really cool. All right. Well, very good. Anybody else, any other thoughts or comments? All right. Well, thank you very much, Maria, for taking the time to, to pull this together and, and instructing us on how this uh, complicated but yet simple package works. So um, we'll let you pick it up again next week. And then Sandra will also handle a little bit on pipes. And then the week after that will be functions with Colin. And then I think we'll be back to chapter 20 at that point and we'll see, we'll see where it goes. So um, with that, I hope everybody has a great night and a great week. And we will talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.